Hey, what's up, everybody? Tim Albrecht here, and welcome to this week's episode of the Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast, where we feature questions from you, the YFP community, to be answered by one of our very own fee-only certified financial planners. Please note this podcast is intended for educational purposes and should not be considered financial or investment advice, as we do not know all the variables to one's personal situation when answering a question. Before we jump into today's question, a shout out to our extraordinary YFP financial planning team that makes this segment possible. Your Financial Pharmacist offers fee-only comprehensive financial planning services that are customized to the pharmacy professional. So whether you want to pay off your student loans, make the right investment decisions, or simply build a solid financial plan, we'll help get your income working for you rather than the other way around. You can learn more by visiting yfpplanning.com. Again, that's yfpplanning.com. Okay, this week's question comes from Frank in Bonita Springs, Florida. Hi, this is Frank Macias from Bonita Springs, Florida. I was wondering about uh, 401ks and retirement accounts and max annual contributions. I was wondering if it's possible to contribute beyond the max to a 401k or even a IRA, I guess, what are the penalties or if there's fees associated or if it's even possible? Thanks for your time. Thank you, Frank, for submitting your question to be featured on this week's Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast. Tim Baker, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this in the context of like the 2021 number. So, you know, turning the page on 2020, thankfully, and, and we'll look at that. Now, not a, not a lot of changes, but so in general, when people think about their 401k, and I'm going to use 401k interchangeably with 403b, TSP, and IRA, the max contributions that come to mind are, are pretty set and, and I think more or less you know, well-known. So for the 401k, you know, what we're looking at is a, a, a contribution max from the participant of $19,500 per year. If you're 50 years or older, you can actually tack on another 6,500. So 19,500 plus the 6,500. Now for 403Bs, they have a kind of another funky catch-up amount where I think it's after like 15 years of service with the 403B, you can actually tack on another 3,000. So 19,500 19, for most of us, if you're age 50 or older, it's 60, another 6,500 in terms of a catch-up. And then for certain 403Bs with a certain amount of uh, years of service, it's another $3,000. So for the most most of it, that's the way that we, we look at it. Now, on the IRA side for 2021, the total contribution that you can make, and again, there's no employer on this, uh, this side of things, is 6000 with a, a catch-up after age 50 of $1,000. So, so 7000 for those over um, age 50. Now, those are typically the numbers that we work with. For the most part, for most people, if you go over those numbers, there's a penalty. There's an over contribution penalty from both the 401k and the IRA of 6%. So this is an excess contribution penalty. So the example is if you contribute, if you're a 35-year-old pharmacist and you put $7,000 into your IRA and you're only allowed to put $6,000, you've over made an over contribution of $1,000 you owe $60, which is the 6% each year until you correct that mistake. So those will continue to compound every time, you know, every year until you correct that. So you then in that in- instance, you actually have to take the money out to write, write the wrong. And that's the same thing for the 401k. And you typically see this happen, Tim, when, you know, if you have multiple jobs, right? you know, you're contributing 10,000 in one and then 10,000 mm-hmm. in another 401k, you're over the, you know, by $500 and then there's your 6%. So then you have to work with your plan to get that over contribution out. Mm-hmm. So those are, you know, those are by, by and large the rules. Now, the question that Frank asks and poses, are there situations where you can put more money beyond the max? And there is, And this is typically um, in the form of what's called a mega backdoor Roth contribution. And it can be very, very complicated with multiple steps. So I'll kind of give you the high level of what this looks like. Sounds intense, by the way. It is. A mega. A mega backdoor (laughs) Roth. So basically the way this works, the cleanest way to do this is if if you don't have any pre-tax IRA. So like a traditional IRA, a SEP IRA, a simple IRA, unless you're looking to convert those into a Roth, 
because there's an aggregate rule that looks at everything and, and how you're able to convert that. So that's one thing. If you're looking at a clean sheet, most people are not. But if it's a clean sheet, it's easier to do this. The other thing that you need to have is a 401k that allows what's called after-tax contributions. So these are not Roth contributions. These are after-tax contributions. They're similar but different. With a Roth, you put in that you put that money into a Roth, either a 401k or an IRA with after-tax money, and it grows tax-free and it comes out tax-free. After-tax contributions do not. So they go in after-tax. They grow tax-free, but then when they're distributed, they're actually taxed again. So you need a plan that allows a, a 401k that has after-tax contributions, and this is put into a completely separate bucket. And I think the stats say that anywhere between 40 to 45% of, of plans allow this. The other thing that you need, the plan has to have is it's called an, in, an in-service distribution option and typically for a non, non-hardship. So it lets you move money from the after-tax portion of your plan into a Roth IRA. So you put... Mm-hmm. You put the amount of money you know, after. So this is this is above the nineteen thousand five hundred that you can put in. So let's let's pretend that you've maxed out your IRA, you've maxed out your four hundred one k nineteen thousand five hundred, and you have another ten thousand dollars to play with. The IRS allows you between you and your employer to put up the fifty eight thousand dollars per year. So nineteen thousand five hundred. Let's pretend they they match a certain percent. So you're up to twenty eight thousand. You have a, technically another thirty thousand if you're allowed after-tax contributions. So you would put that money in, let's just pretend in our case it's $10,000, and then you would essentially take a in-service, non-hardship withdrawal that you would then port that money over to a Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. And basically that's how you can go above and beyond that limit. So this is typically for people that are kind of like the mega, mega savers, maxing out 401k, IRAs, et cetera. So it is a complex strategy with many, many moving pieces. But these would be, Frank, the one you know one of the ways that you could potentially go over and do it in a way that makes sense from a tax perspective to over over contribute to the to the four hundred one k. Great question uh, by Frank. We got we got in the weeds there, which is good. I think I think many of our our listeners might might be uh, perhaps in that situation where they max out accounts, looking for additional strategies. And and for those that are hearing some of this for the first time, you know we've got lots of resources available as well. I think we uh, a little biased, but I think we did a nice job in Seven Figure Farmers, just giving a, a broad overview of investing. We also have talked about before we did the investing series on the YFP podcast, episode seventy two through seventy six. For those that are are more on the beginning side of the investing journey, and I think Tim, this is a good example, uh, mega mega investing or non mega investing of just the importance of having a planner, having a coach, uh, having somebody in your corner that you can talk some of this out loud and make sure, as we've talked about many times before, that it jives with the rest of your financial plan that you're crossing your t's, dotting your eyes, and also that you're considering the tax implications as well. So, how often? With our clients at YFP Planning, I mean, how often are, are you getting into these types of conversations, backdoor Roths, you know, what we'd consider as, I guess, some more of the, the quote, advanced investing strategies? Yeah, I would say it's all the time. I mean, we had a client recently that came on. She was contributing to an, a Roth IRA and she wasn't allowed to. Um, and we had years of that that we had to go back and actually correct. So things like that. And then and then how do we do the conversions and and things like that? So yeah, it's all the time, and I and I think like you know, I, I one of the reasons that we offer tax as part of our service is that they're just joined at the hip. These are mm-hmm. conversations that we're going to continuously have, and I think as you know, pharmacists move from kind of f- a foundational ability to build wealth and to actually build in long term wealth, the tax and the investments are gonna are gonna be a consistent conversation that we have. So. Yeah, it's it's frequent. It's frequent that we have these conversations, and I think like typically, as you get, go further along, the more the more impactful it can be from a mm-hmm. dollar amount. So it's definitely something that you know I think is good to have multiple you know professionals looking at it, both from a strategic investment, but also from a tr- strategic tax perspective. Yeah, and again, for those listening, whether you're putting you know the first dollars in your four hundred one k, or whether you're looking for more advanced strategies, we'd love to have a chance to talk with you to see if our services are a good fit. For your needs, what you're looking for, our comprehensive financial planning services, you learn more at yfpplanning.com. Book a discovery call. Again, what investing, one one piece of the puzzle, an important one, but we'd love to talk about your investing plan as well as the other parts of your financial plan. So again, to Frank, thank you for taking the time to submit your question to be featured on 
this week's Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast. And as a small thank you, we're going to be sending him a super comfy YFP t-shirt. And to those listening, we'd love to hear from you and to feature your question on a future episode. And you can submit that question by going to yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash ask YFP or shoot us an email at info at yourfinancialpharmacist.com. Have a great rest of your week.